traditional worship in the Jewish synagogue, it went something like this in this holy, sacred space. The word of the prophets would be read seven times. First of all, the priests would read a scripture. And then the Levite would read a portion. And then five persons would stand and they would read they were Israelites, but they were the common, everyday, ordinary people. You see, the Levites and the priests, but they also had a place for the everyday, ordinary people to read the Holy Script. Can I preach tonight? Mm, I feel it coming. I feel it coming. Come on, cool down, Violet. Common, ordinary people who felt moved by the Holy Spirit. And already they would read and then they would go back to their seats. Jesus had never done anything like this before. But on this occasion, the Bible said that he got out of his seat, walked up into the holy place, and we call it, the scripture calls it the holy of holiest. We call it the pulpit, the holy space. It used to be sacred. Oh, I ain't going to get into that. And as he stepped up, he was handed the holy scroll. Because it was expected if you come, then you're going to read. And he was handed the scroll, and the Bible said when he took the book, he turned to Isaiah's prophecy. And he turned to that place where he found these words, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are bruised, to preach the acceptable word of the Lord. And then he said, today, this prophecy is being fulfilled. Now, I want you to note something here that many people miss. It says Bishop Washington that he was given the scroll. But it also did, and as I did an exegete of this, it said that he had to turn the page. That's what I'm going to preach tonight. He had to turn the page because he was given the script, but it was not at Isaiah's passage. And he had to turn the page and find where it was written that his time was now, his time would come, can I preach, about 15 minutes. I want to preach tonight because some of us need to turn the page. The Holy Ghost gave me a word for you, Bishop. It's time to turn the page. We've been stuck on page one too long. We've been stuck in our traditions, in our history, in personalities, in stuff. Oh, my God, help me. I'm supposed to act like this. I'm 72. Turn the page. Then he went to his seat and sat down after telling them, today I'm coming out. Today I am declaring who I am and what my mission is. I contend, brothers and sisters, that many of us who have been called by God have forgotten that call. We've forgotten the inauguration. We've forgotten our ordination. We've forgotten the consecration. And we're going about our business as usual. We've forgotten the mandate. We've forgotten the questions that we said yes to. And the Holy Spirit gave me this preach because you're going to do ordination tomorrow. You're going to do consecration tomorrow. Oh, my God. But there are some of us who are stuck. And we need on page one. And we need to turn the page. 
And so this is his mission statement, his inauguration. And then the conversation went around like this. Who is that? Who does he think he is reading from Isaiah's prophecy? He's just a young boy. Well, he was only 30, 33 years old, wasn't he? 30 years old when he started. Who's this little young upstart coming up in here? And we know the Jewish law and we know the Torah. We've studied the Torah. We know all about our fathers of old and we know the prophecies that were given. What is he doing here? And somebody asked the question, if you read that, Bishop Palmer asked the question, isn't he Joseph's son? Isn't he the carpenter's son? Isn't he Mary's son? He ain't got no business walking up in here trying to tell us what to do. Don't you know where he came from? He worked out in the carpenter shop with his daddy. Never been to a school of higher learning. Never taken Greek. Doesn't know that much Hebrew. Never sat in a classroom, but he steps up here and said, The Spirit of the Lord is on me. Mm, mm, mm. Give me 15 minutes. And he said, Today the scripture is being fulfilled in your, in your midst. I'm turning the page. You've known me as Joseph's son. You've known me as that little lad. You've known me walking around the dusty streets of Jerusalem. But I'm turning the page now. I am the long for Messiah. I am the one who was prophesied that I would come. I am the one who has the bread of life. I am the one who will redeem all of Israel. I am he. I'm turning the page. Oh, listen to him. I've been called. I've been called and anointed to heal the sick. What's your mission statement? What, what is your vision statement? Why are y'all here? Why are you here? I've been called to bring salvation and deliverance to those who are bound and in captivity. I've come and called to bring healing and comfort to those who are sick. I've been called to release those who are in prison, not natural prisons, but spiritual, psychological, and emotional prisons. I want us to know that the black Pentecostal church has it. We have been slothful. We used to use the gifts of the Spirit. Folk would come to church and they'd go home healed. They'd start jumping around saying, God has healed me. They'd come in drunk and they'd get and they were so intoxicated they would stung me in and they'd go home saying, I'm born again. My God, where is the power that was given to us through Jesus Christ? I've come that you might have life. I've come to preach good news to the poor in spirit. And so they began to ask those questions, and he took his seat and sat down amongst them. Why? Because John the Baptist saw the Spirit of God descending on him, and he said, this is the one. He knew it was going to happen. He was appointed. He was ordained by the Holy Spirit for the work of ministry for just three short years. But that work would continue and does continue century after century. I want you to know, my friends, that Jesus came as our example, letting us know that we've got to be moved by the Holy Spirit. We've got to be intoxicated with the Holy Spirit. We've got to understand our job, our role, our mandate in the body of Christ. Jesus, priest, prophet, and king. And then to look at this, we said, I am the anointed one. What does that mean today? It means that you are owned by God. To be anointed, you are owned by God. And that's why you can say it's no longer I. But it's the Christ who lives within me. 
You do not belong to yourself. To be anointed means that your life is given to the ministry of Jesus Christ. And he said to his disciples, I've got to go away, but I want you to have the same anointing and the same power. Go into Jerusalem and wait until Pentecost. You are going to be a part of my establishment in this earth. What I appreciate about Jesus, he didn't say that I got to have $25 to get in a prayer line. I'm not talking about offering, I'm talking about a prayer line. Didn't say that I had to buy a $50, $50 rag to put in my pocketbook or in my bosom so that I could get rich or I could be blessed. That I had to go around my friends with something in my shoes that I might be healed. He said, because I am the anointed one, I've already set the anointing and it will heal you. I've come anointed to heal your bodies. I heal, I deliver, I set free. What's wrong? When we live and move under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, there is great fruitfulness. The opposite is all true, so true when we're not under the anointing. There's nothing but frustration and barren ground. Can I say it? When you're living under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you begin to look like and feel like and act like and smell like and taste like you've been with Jesus. Folk will know when you've been with Jesus. Let us pray, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. I have been anointed to preach the gospel to the poor, to bring good news to the poor. Where are the evangelists? Everybody wants to wear a collar. Choking us half to death. And for so many of us, we can't even spell collar. Wouldn't dare walk up in here as our, as our vice presiding bishop does tonight with a shirt and a necktie because everywhere I go, they got to know that I am a preacher. What has happened to the humility in the body of Christ? What has happened? It's no more I, but it's Christ that lives in me. What you see me doing is not violent. It's the Holy Spirit working in me and through me. Ooh, I feel it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. We look at our congregations and we wonder, when, where is the Spirit? Where is life in the Spirit? Why do we have to pump people up to say hallelujah? Why do we have to have a whole full drum and full musical orchestra for folk to get a dance on? Why can't you get a dance on just by saying Jesus? Why can't you get a dance on just by raising your hands? Why can't you get a praise just by saying thank God? We've watered down the anointing of the Spirit. I, I, I can't go much. I can't go much. But, but we've watered it down. We feel that it's emotionalism. It's emotionalism. Oh, my God. But the old saints of old used to say, you got to stay there until you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, and my God, in a mighty burning fire. Didn't they say so? You had to stay and wait until the fullness of God's power resonated in your very being. Uh, and these signs and wonders will follow those who believe. Uh, they can cast out demons in my name. They can speak uh, to the sick and they will be well, etc. You know it. What's going on? Let, let me move, let me move. Before we can turn the page, we got to acknowledge the page we're on. Hello? Three quick points, three quick points. We've got to acknowledge the page we're on, you see, because some of us are stuck in unproductive ministries. <laughs> 